so feel free to introduce yourself to the audience and then uh, you can carry on the with the training apologies for that um wi-fi issue there so i'm on the hot spot so to introduce myself first uh i'm living and born and raised in the uk so my parents my ancestry is from pakistan actually kashmir interesting fact most pakistanis in the uk are not from pakistan our ancestry is kashmir but um I came across Ishan when the first uh, Scrum Master training happened in Lahore earlier this year. Something I was very impressed with because I was in the process of um, working with a local UK organisation and we're also doing training in Pakistan. I think it's very, very important from my perspective to pass this knowledge on that we have to the community of Pakistan. So Pakistan can also offer the world uh, another skill set. So we, are also, we also have agile people who are very um, much equipped to help. I have a friend that I sent Zishan something to. I have a friend who had a vision about six years ago. He's from Africa and he's now running agile in Africa every year. And inshallah, that's what I want to do with Zishan, that we should have agile in Pakistan every year because... Inshallah. The sky's the limit, okay? The sky's the limit, how far you can go with this. And you yourselves, you audience, are the most important people because you can make this a reality in Pakistan. I can help you as much as I can, but you know, like in English, they say you could take a horse to the water if you can't make it drink it. So inshallah, if you guys have the enthusiasm, I'm here to help as much as I can. Because what I want to see is Pakistanis being known as skilled IT people and they can also help. I, I realise I've got 45 minutes. So Inshallah, that's very good. I, I go to presenter view. Hopefully you can see the screen. That's the first thing. Is that correct? I'm share screening. Yes, yes, we can see, the, we can see the screen. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. What can you see? Can you just see what is Scrum or can you see anything else? So we see two slides, one the bigger version and one the small version. So yeah, what is Scrum it. and then what is Scrum with some details. Okay. So why is it not coming on this one? So this is what I want to start off with, the basics. Scrum is lightweight, simple to understand, and I'll put in red, difficult to master because that's true. In my experience, wherever I go, this is the most difficult thing. People think Scrum is easy. Yes, it is. It's lightweight, but it's not easy to implement. Uh, I took this from the Scrum Guide. You can see, so the Scrum Guide, Ken Schwager himself and Jeff Sutherland, they wrote this in their Scrum Guide. It's difficult to master. As I was preparing this presentation, I saw something on LinkedIn that I thought I'd share with you. Um, these aren't my words. I believe that over 75% organizations attempting Scrum are not close to being ready for it. Either create the environment for it to be successful or try some techniques which will fit with your current culture. That was written by Kareem Harbert, who I know very well on LinkedIn. I recommend that if you don't know him, he's a very good guy, very skilled guy in the agile world. I don't know where he got that stat from, but with my experience, I would agree that is it. it just to give yourselves a um, opening to the type of environment we're working with, we're going in somewhere, more often than not, the problem is with the organization. They're not ready to implement Scrum and they're implementing something that goes wrong. When is that? I, I put this here because I like this. So when Agile's not working, generally what happens, an organization says, let's try Agile because everyone's doing it. It's the flavor, okay? And they seem to have an assumption here that that means there's no more planning, no documentation, let the developers code, and that's it. And what, what you need, that's far from the truth. It's a misconception that Agile has no documentation. What Agile says is they value it, but they value people and processes over that. Don't do the overkill with documentation, so much documentation up front. That's, that's the difference. You need documentation because as you work on any project, you need to have a trail. The most important thing at the end of a project is that anyone new coming in, they have documentation, see what the project about, what were the issues they had, how much were the budget costs, what were the spikes they worked on? What was the design? Show me the architecture. There's so much documentation to do. <clears throat> Scrum is not the silver bullet. So oh. people think when we do Scrum, that will solve our problems. So you as Scrum Masters need to ask when you go 
patients why using Scrum because it opens the people's mind and it opens your mind to understand why they're doing it. And more often than not, you might hear the answer, oh, well, we tried waterfall. Oh, well, this is what we've heard about. It's good. As soon as you hear that, you need to think, uh-oh, they've not really investigated this. It's not the silver bullet. There's no framework out there that will solve everyone's problems. And I, Scrum is no different. It's not easy to implement, okay? So people think it's easy to implement. No, it's not. And it's not a methodology. It's a framework. So I put here because sometimes people have a question, well, what do you mean by that? Agile is a methodology. Agile has Scrum, Lean, Kanban, XP. It gives you various methodologies. Scrum is the framework, which is, and the definition really is, it's a loose, but it's a structure. What they do with the Scrum, as most frameworks, they've given you something that you're expected to build on top of. You're not expected to say, right, this is it, and we're going to work on this. If anyone's heard of the shuhari phase, have, have any of you guys come across that terminology? Shuhari. Okay, they use it in martial arts, and you can apply this to most things in life. What that means is, when you're in the shoe phase, you're learning. You're learning what what is the proper way to do it? And that's with Scrum Guide. Then you have the half phase where you build on top of that and you have the re phase where you just run away with it using your own imagination. Okay? And same with martial arts. What they say is first of all, you become a black belt. Then after that, you're going to be learning other techniques. But then it comes to a stage where you don't need to learn now. You need to be using your own uh, imagination. It has to this work for us. A problem that many organizations have, they try to fit everything that Scrum says into their organization. It might not work. It might not work how Scrum amended it. So a real life example, we, in one of my teams, we've abandoned having retrospectives. The reason why we abandoned it is because they didn't feel there's any use in it. And I said, okay, let's not do something just for the sake of it. Later on in this presentation, I'll tell you why we abandoned it. If, it probably make more sense to you. The first thing you need to do as Scrum Masters is evaluate a team's performance. So when you go in there, it's not about telling them how Scrum works. You need to see how are they doing Scrum. Okay, so one of the first things that I do is I have a one-to-one -one with each team member. So imagine Zishan was in my team and Zishan's a developer and I've started a Scrum Master. I would book in a and I'd say, hey Zishan, let's get together for half an hour just to talk to each other. Just, just, you know, you tell me what you're about, I'll tell you what I'm about. And I'll have a friendly chat. I'll, I'll say, look, I'm not here to tell you guys how to do things. I'm not going to micromanage you. Zishan, is there anything you want to tell me? Zishan might say, yeah, man, you know what? Um, it's not working for us. I'm getting frustrated with Scrum. Fine. And I, I will ask them, do you understand? I will say, Zishan, do you understand what a daily stand-up is? Do you know why we do that? It would give me an idea to understand what level is each person at. Do they actually understand the fact? Not, I'm not asking, do you know, tell me about the sermons, and they'll tell me, oh, we have a stand-up, we have sprint planning, we have retros. I'm not interested in that. Why do you have these sessions? That's what I want to understand. Why do you have sprint planning? Why do you have um, retrospectives? Why do you have a demo? I don't know that. That tells me that they probably didn't receive the training themselves, and they don't understand the value in it. And because they don't understand the value in it, they're not going to really buy into it. That's the first thing. I have my own uh, health checklist, which I can send you guys. I'll send it to Zishan later. It's an Excel spreadsheet that I created over years. And I just have a question in there. For example, I have a question in there of a health check. Does the team have a PO? Yes, they do. Do they have a dedicated area where they have sprints, daily stand-ups? They do. Are they time boxing their meetings and following it? So if they're stand-ups for 15 minutes, are they following it? So I, I've got about 60, 70 questions that I do. I just observe. All I do when I go in there, I say, guys, carry on. Because they might be the best team. And what's the point of me telling them what to do? Observe. If you go to the Agile Man uh, Manifesto website, you'll see they've got 12 basic principles of Agile, which, which you can uh, ask, answer the question yourself. Look at the team and see, are they following principles or not? I'll put the link there. That is a very good indicator. And some of the things in there are the team is self-organizing. They, every now and then they review what they're doing. Are they going along the right track? 
do they have the support do they have the right environment to work in the conditions they've been asked to work these are some of the questions that you can ask just by looking at the manifesto team values did someone ask a question there no carry on, carry on. are you sure does someone have a question please feel free to interrupt me if you do have a no, question. No, I think someone left the mic on. You can carry on, Imran. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Values. Team values are very important. You might think, why? But everyone has team values because it, it is our set of beliefs that we agree on working together. Now, we all have, let me give you some example. In life, we all agree the value we have as a human being is that we would be polite. By default, we'll be polite to everyone. That's a value we have. We don't need to tell people that. But as a team, when I go to a team, I say, what's your values? And they say, we don't have any, or we... Every organization I worked for, for example, Sky, their value is believe in better. And they promote that everywhere in the UK. Where if you go to their offices, you'll see believe in better. Team values are important. You, what do you believe in? So if, if you say to team, right, we're doing a two week sprint. Do you all agree that we should aim to finish the work we take? That sprint, yes, we do. Okay, that's a value. That's one of your values, then you believe in that. Do you all believe that everyone in the team should have an equal opportunity to speak? So when we're in sprint planning, it's fine that someone's got the most experience, but other people should be allowed to talk. Yeah. Ways of working. Some of those values will go into ways of working somewhere. So ways of working is, for example, we will work on small user stories. We will make sure that the tester has something to test by day three of the sprint. These are not things that you need to come up with. These are things that normally the team come up with. But one of the questions that I do is I ask them, because if they don't have this, it shows to me they're not a mature team. These are simple things that we go through. Definition of ready, definition of done. Definition of ready means, do you guys, before a user story even comes in the sprint, do you have a criteria that criteria is things like the user story has an acceptance criteria, the user story has business value on it, the user story has person knowers. We understand how we're going to test this user story. It's not too big. If they don't have that information, again, it's telling me that's one of the reasons things are going wrong later on. What happens if the health report is not good? I'll put this picture up here. There's Anyone know where this is from? Houston, we have a problem. Does anyone want to take a guess where this is from? From the space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in 1970, um, the US launched a uh, three man mission to go to the moon. As they got there, they, uh, they were supposed to land on the moon. This was after the first landing. And as they got there, their oxygen tank burst. The first thing they did is a famous quote. They said, Houston, we have a problem. Houston is where the space station is on Earth. We have a problem. In our case, we as Scrum Masters need to shout to the program, not literally, but make it clear we got a problem. Don't conceal it. Because the program normally are saying, oh, these guys are not delivering on time. We're not seeing value. The business is putting pressure on us. As Scrum Masters, we've come in there. We've done our health assessment in the previous report. We've spoken to individuals. And if the health report's not good, nine times out of ten, it's not good, guys. We have to let the program know. We've got a problem. That's the first thing you must do. Don't try to do it behind closed doors because everyone is in it together. So what happens next? Speak to them. And listen what I did, right? So now there's different ways of doing it. I'm just sharing with you my experience. If there's something in there you don't like, don't take it. That's fine. But what I did, I spoke to the program and I said, we need an off-site workshop. Can anyone tell me why I said off-site? Because we have offices, we have meeting rooms. Why would we want to go off-site? Come on, Scrum Masters, you should have energy. Why would I not book a meeting room that can hold the team in there? Why have I requested off-site? 
Thank you, guys. It's okay. Change of scenery. Uh, Change of scenery is good. And what was the other one? Uh, maybe uh, in formal way. You, you have somebody in formal way. Yeah, that's right. In formal way. Yeah, and to relax them. Basically, do you know when you're at work in that same environment, you're just thinking about work. Even if you're in a meeting room, people can get distracted. They take their laptop with them. Get out of that scenery. We have a problem. Get off site. And normally, automatically, you have a team bonding exercise then. It just automatically happens. That was the first thing. Because you want to get away from that environment. Let the team know as well. Share it with the team that we're going to have this off-site workshop. And this is why we're going to have it. You're going to tell them that I've had one-to-ones with yourselves. I've shared the results with you. So normally it's an Excel spreadsheet. You just share. You don't put individuals' names down. What I do, if there's 10 people in the team, I just get their score. I ask them to fill out a questionnaire and I get their score and I show them as a team, we're only 50% agile. And do you all agree? There'll be no team that would say, hey, that's a bad idea. We're actually really doing well. They'll welcome it. I always, this is a question. I've always said to them, come prepared because this is not me telling you what to do, guys. This is, this is a collective effort. So we all need to be in this together to understand how we can improve. So get them to prepare how we can be the best team that I was talking about. A difference between Scrum Masters and Project Managers, these are my, um, this is my view, is that managers tell people what to do. They, they, you know, if you're any of your parents, we tell our children what to do sometimes. That's a manager. A Scrum Master is a leader. What's a leader? A leader is someone that leads by example and makes people believe that they can do what was impossible. You give them the belief, you lead by example. The best example I could give to you guys, in my opinion, is Imran Khan. He's been a leader in cricket. He's been a leader in the hospital project. He's, he's a leader everywhere he goes. Why? Why is he so good? He's not a dictator to the, to the teams that he's worked with. You listen to the, cricket, uh, the players. He was that example leader. I, I recently listened to an interview um, from the 1992 World Cup. Mushtaq Ahmed was, he said, I was a young 21-year-old in that World Cup. Imran Khan was nearly 40, but he told Imran Khan, he gave his opinion to Imran Khan, I want to bowl when Graham Hick comes into bat. I think I'm out. Imran liked that idea, and he said, yes. If that was a manager, Mushtaq Ahmed would not have had the ability to do that. That's what a leader is. And that's why I put that bullet point there, that we need to tell the team, you come and tell me how, what needs to be done as well. It's not a one-way thing. Decide the format. So sometimes you have games. Um, if they, there's, an XP, there's a game called the XP game that you might have played. I don't know, Zishan, did you guys play that when you did the Scrum course? Uh, no, no, we didn't play this one, no. Okay. So there's a website that, again, I can send you, and it's got all types of games there. Scrum courses that you go on, they play these games because there's a moral behind the game. It's not just a game. So it's a game where you estimate and... They'll give you an example. For example, they said, you're right, throw a dice and get the number five 10 times in two minutes. And it get you thinking, how can I do that? What I'll put there is do not have DPP. Do not have death by PowerPoint. Don't, you don't need PowerPoint slides. One of the best retrospectives I've had recently was um, last week where I grabbed the team and we sat all around our desk area and we just talked. No post-it notes, no laptops, we just talked. Okay, sometimes it's just doing something simple. Okay, so I've put the answer that you've already answered, why it is off site. Okay, so this is what we did. We started this when we went to this workshop. We said, why are we here? Why are we doing this program or project? And I got the business um, sponsor to come in and give that presentation. So we started from the bare basics. Before we even go to Agile's wrong, can you tell us why we're doing this project? What is the advantage for the business, the return on investment, the roadmap? I put a star there because afterwards, most of the pe my team said, that was brilliant. Now we know what we're trying to do for the next 12 months as a business, that helps us focus on what we need to do. Uh, um, 
And I made it interactive, asking in a QA session with the team what they think is important to the business. So, for example, if we're building an e commerce website, what do you think will happen if the customers cannot make an order? So, I've got the team thinking, what do you think would happen? Obviously, the business loses um, revenue, but the customer might go elsewhere. They're not getting what they want. Here's something really crucial decisions, how many? Do you recognize some of the people in this picture? Come on, guys, that's an obvious one. Yes. I hope. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, one. many, I believe. Yeah. Can you tell me what do you think these guys have in common? They are famous. They're very famous. I'll give you that. Leaders. Leaders. Something else to do with our, our agile world. They wear the same clothes every day. Barack Obama only has two suits. He had gray and navy blue, and he would rotate. The pup, Steve's. Do you know why? And I'll put the link there. I might, I might suck about the founder of Face, Face uh, book. Because they don't have time to think about these things. What am I going to wear today? They've got other more important decisions to think about. One thing as Scrum Masters you might need to look at is how many decisions are the team making? How many times are they going down having just meetings for the sake of meetings, which is wasting their time? What are the key decisions they need to make? The key decisions they need to make is how much work will we take in the sprint? How will we build this, whatever they're trying to build? What are our dependencies? They, need, they don't need to be worrying about things like meeting rooms, things like the audio's not working, things like why are things not working for us? We need to worry about that. Take out the decisions that you feel are lean. Another flavor of Agile is called lean. Eliminate waste. Anything that you see that's waste, we don't need that waste. So imagine you have a suitcase. When you're packing, you can't take your full wardrobe. You take the most important things. Same with Agile, just make sure you're making the most important decisions to think about then we did a team exercise i got them to break in groups and i said right on post-its we'll answer this question what is the elephant in the room the elephant in the room meaning what is so obvious that is a massive problem but we're not fixing it okay you tell me now, this is a fantastic one. Uh, this is something I spoke to an Agile coach about, actually, and I said, look, I'm doing this. Do you have any ideas? And he gave me this idea. He said, so what we said is, right, our current situation, what is it? And we we'll said we're not in a good situation. And what I said is, right, let's roll back to the start of time. How did we get in? Let's start. And then, Mike, remember that picture I showed you? Normally what happens, an organization says, we're going to start using Agile, and there was no training, there was no pilot product project, there was no um, sense check to see how's it going, they just went deep into it, and that's what you'll find normally, that's what happens. Then I say, what's the ideal scenario? If we carry on now to the future, what is the best possible scenario for us? And they say, we fix these issues, and... We are delivering on time in our sprints and we're working more optimally. And I said, what's the worst scenario? The worst scenario is people start leaving the organization. We just get, it gets us thinking. The key thing there is rolling back. How did we get in this situation in the first place? Here's another question. To the team, say, imagine that there was no consequences to your actions. What would you, not me, the Scrum Master, make to do? sharing everyone's experience it's not just about me i can share my experience and give my views but what would you do because more often than not they'll say right the problem is your user stories are too big uh, our meetings take too long they, they will tell you what the problems are and that's why again when you're off-site it's easier to talk they don't feel they're in that environment where i'm at work can i openly speak so there's somewhere else ask them just about one issue because they'll probably give you a list. What is the one that needs to be solved ASAP? And here's another question I asked them. In your experience, what are the best teams that you've worked in? So when I talk about my experience, I say the best teams I've worked in, they always talk to each other. They can challenge each other. 
they um, sit together. They will all take responsibility. So I give some of the things that I say, that's some of the things I've noticed in the best teams that I've worked in. They are self-organizing, okay? Um, they don't need me to tell them what to do. They, they can do that. They can start a stand-up and challenge each other. The stand-up isn't for the scrum master, far from it's for the team. Those are the best teams, but they can get their viewpoints. A jam session. The jam session, discuss these issues, and there's a book, I think it's a book, I've got it, ask the question why five times. So example, um, why are we in this situation? That's question number one. We're in the situation because we had no training. Why did you have no training? I don't know. Why don't you know? I'm not sure. Do you understand? You keep asking the question why, why, why? Okay, another scenario can be, um, what is the one issue that needs solving ASAP? The one issue that needs solving is we don't have enough resources to deliver. Why do we not have enough resources? Because there's more work than people. Why have we not flagged this to anyone? When you keep asking that question, you'll notice that the answers normally come out. But it's an open discussion. Okay, it's not a, you're not, we're challenging each other. It's not, I need to make that clear. When I'm, if I'm speaking to Zishan, I'm not saying it to Zishan like, is Zishan's fault that this has all gone wrong. Um, we're having a mature conversation. Well, why did this happen, Zishan? Why did you not do this? Just, just to see, what is it? <laughs> Lastly, very important, agree on outcomes from the workshop. Like I said, we had this workshop and then I raised tickets in JIRA, uh, which is our agile tool we use, to follow who will do what. Um, we gave task owners because it's all very well having this workshop, management know about it, and we've come up with lovely ideas. This is where we now kick in as Scrum Masters. We take ownership of what's come out of there. So we took ownership. One of the things that we had was um, setting up second level support for the application that we're developing. Okay, we need to speak to the director. We, we established our workshop. We need to speak to the director. We need to speak to the IT department on his level, service desk, to say the application we're developing, we need support. We need you guys to support it. That's not a conversation I can have. But I raised a ticket for it to then follow that up with the director to say, this is what you need to do. This is what's come out of it. The people in this room, we don't have, we're not at that level. We can't go to the IT service just and say, start supporting us. The costs involved. You need to have that logistics conversation. That's very important. Otherwise, what you notice is people will say, oh, we had a workshop, but nothing's happened. Nothing's changed. When you start showing them progress, they'll then say, okay, yeah, this is a serious thing let the team provide the solution so if they've come out with something and you think yeah i'm not sure about that i'm not sure if it's going to work remember they're the ones that make the project the success not us we provide them the environment but ultimately they do the work so guide them but okay if they come up with a solution of how to proceed accept it this is an agile, and this is, this is where I think most organizations go wrong as well. They don't empower the team and trust them. What we mean by that is let them get on with it. Don't sit over them every day. When you go to, let me give an example that I normally give. When you go to McDonald's or KFC and you order your meal, let's say you order a fish burger meal. Once you've ordered that meal, most customers do not then stand and see What's going on in the kitchen? Are they doing it correctly? No. You trust them. You trust them to get your meal ready within four minutes. You've empowered them. In life, when you start empowering people, they'll have more respect for you and also you'll notice that they feel more relaxed, that you have the confidence. However, if there's people that need coaching, then they need coaching. What I mean by that is there might be people who you might come up with a new technique of uh, behavior driven development but they don't know how to do it they've identified that behavior driven development might be something they can use how do they do that you might yourself not know how to do that but find someone remember we are not problem solvers there's no way we can solve all their problems if a developer's got technical issues that with coding 
they're writing too much lines of code and you're not a developer, don't try solving it yourself. All you need to see is, right, I need to find someone who's got more experience in this area to help you. There might be someone in the team external, fine. That's our job. Our job is not to fix every single issue and f uh, put pressure on ourselves as Scrum Masters. Oh, uh, I need to fix this. No, you might need to find someone to fix the pro problem for you. Enjoy the work. Um, that's what I always tell my teams. Enjoy it. We're always learning. Always, always learning. Don't think that we're the perfect and you know we're doing Scrum and we're going to solve everything. It takes time, enjoy your work. A lot of times I do get people who I see they're under pressure and I have to take them in the room and say, look, relax. It's just a job. You're doing the best of your ability. Things will come to you naturally. If there's anything I can do, and sometimes I pair program, right? So I might say to a developer, we need to start pair programming. One developer pair program with another developer. So that developer can also learn. Just watching someone, sitting and watching someone, how they're, how they're doing their coding. Or it might be a business analyst or PO who's got too much to do, too many user stories to write. I said, I said, okay, I can help you out there. But enjoy, because as soon as people are not enjoying, that's not good. People know that's not good for team morale. I'm very open to questions because I know I'm rushing this because of time limits, but um, I want to, please feel free to ask me questions. If I've not been clear on anything, this is your chance to question me, to quiz me. But I do agree with um, what Kareem said in his uh, first slide. I do think that was uh, accurate, that I think at least 75% of organisations, if not more, <coughs> they, they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. It's a similar story. They're not ready for it. Even if people who I know are very experienced have done it before, when they go into an organisation that haven't prepared for it, you're just set up for a disaster. You really are. And remember, try to fix things slowly. You're not going to fix everything. So when we came out of the workshop, we all agreed, we're not going to fix this in two weeks. We'll probably fix this over two, three months. But every week, there'll be weekly updates of progress and see things moving. One of the things that I took on, actually, myself, uh, is... I said that I'm going to start. So when a, when a customer logs an error for the team to investigate, I said, I'm going to start looking at those errors first. Just to make sure, real error, is it repeatable? Is there enough information before the development team get it? So I became a stopgap. Uh, the team were getting too much undue attention from outside, which was no good for them. They could not focus on the work in hand. And that's one thing that came out of the workshop. They, they said that we're working on more than just user stories. We're working on the errors as well. And there's no balance. Um, another thing that I found, there was no owner of these errors. The product owner was not owning the errors, which is okay because they've got multiple projects to work on. So it was me then saying, okay, I think the best thing is I do it. I understand the product well enough. Are there any questions? Have I confused you guys? Have I have I muddied the water? Oh, that was very good, Imran. So I think I, I will start with one question. Um, you know, the environment is slightly different in Pakistan where you don't have freedom of having separate scrum master or dedicated product owner. So what is your suggestion in this view where the developer is doing the scrum master role? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've come across that a lot. Um, there's nothing wrong with the developer the master role, as long as they enjoy it and they can do it. But the key thing is, can they balance their time? If not, um, I'm just giving you a few ideas here. They might need to speak to their team members and rotate that every weekly, every sprint, and say, right, I was. Because it's, two, it's a two-man job. What I mean by that is you're wearing two hats, you're a coder, but then also you have to solve problems. So if you, if you go to the stand-up and there's a problem, the developer has to stop the user story and go and solve the problem. Uh, so it might be, and I appreciate culture, because that is a very important one, that different cultures do it different ways. I would probably say to that person that, look, you've got a few options. Number one, 
Do you enjoy it? Do you want to go and become a scrum master later on so it'd be good for your career? If they say no, let's play that role. Then, is it impacting your work? More often than not, it is. Can you probably rotate it as a team? Speak to your management and say, look, it's not, it's, we're, we're giving one person here two people's job. And it's going to have an impact. But if you rotate it, then that person, if there's a team of six, is only doing it once every couple of months for a few weeks, which is much better. The other thing is, if the team's really self organizing, they might not need a scrum master. To, to, what I'm saying is, they might need someone to play that role because they're all in it together and they all appreciate. I'll solve this issue. I'll take that issue. I'm best equipped to solve that issue. And maybe that environment where we all agree that we're, we're all in it together. Let's not just say uh, so and so is the scrum master and they're also a developer. Give it to the whole team and say we're all in it together. If the scrum master misses something, and that's a, that's a hallmark of a good team. If the scrum master misses something, someone else picks it up. Uh, someone else does it and says, um, okay, I'll do it. We're all part of a team. I don't want you to focus on that one person. Does that help? An option? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for a good answer. All right, I do have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Okay. Uh, Imran, thank you so much for a very uh, detailed uh, presentation that you had. Uh, one question, like, when sometimes STEM is not working well, but there could be one reason the project is not right fit for this uh, Agile Scrum. Can you please tell me, Imran, when shall not we use Agile Scrum? Is it, do you have any idea, when, like, can you give some guidelines on that? When that's shall a, will not use Agile Scrum? That's a brilliant question. Absolutely brilliant question. Um, okay. And I've done this in one of my projects at the moment. So what you're trying to do with Scrum, the reason why you're doing Scrum and you're doing time boxes is because you're able to deliver something into had infrastructure projects in Scrum as well. Fine. But you can deliver something. If you have... Are you in prod or not? That's another thing. Or are you just coding, coding? If you are working on something that is not necessarily software, it could be an infrastructure project, there might be other flavors that you need to look at. The most popular one out there that's growing is Kanban. When I started, and this is a real, real life, a few months ago at British Gas, there was Scrum. They were never able to meet their sprints. And the reason was because the nature of the work is back end, is back end that has got no impact, no customer cares about what they're doing. The first question I said is, why are you doing Scrum? Because what I saw is you're not meeting your sprints. I'm going to speak to technical people. They said, there's no way we can deliver anything in two weeks. I looked at the users, looked at the nature of the work. Why are we doing that? You as a business are getting frustrated. You're not, you're not you know, they're not finishing their sprints. They can't finish their sprints. It's not fit for that solution. Why not Kanban? Kanban is basically prioritizing your items. So you work with the product owner, prioritize the items, and then put it on a backlog, and the team just pull it off. As they pull it off, they put it in work progress, and you just ask them for an estimate. How long will it take to do that? 10 days, 12 days, fine, crack on. And then you tell the business, the next card, we're 12 days away from picking because we're working on this and it moves. You've eliminated the sprint planning meetings, you've eliminated the um, retros. You might still need a demo, that's fine. But don't, def uh, they love Kanban by the way now, now they understand it, they absolutely love it. It's not, we need to question that ourselves. Why are you using sprints? Sprints works brilliantly for websites, for anything that they can deliver in small chunks of time boxes. By, by the way, you can even have one week sprints. There's nothing to say you have to have two week sprint. The, the guide states, what, the scrum guide states one to four weeks. You can do three weeks if that works well for the business. And it might be that you say, actually, we can't do two week sprints, we can do three week. Um, there's so many different answers because it might be your user stories are too big. They need to be sliced shorter. 
I had a discussion with one team and we, all, we, we agreed, we'll work in sprints, but because we have monthly releases, monthly releases, that first sprint, two weeks, it doesn't matter whether we finish or not. But for the second sprint, we need to make sure we get what's targeted for the monthly release. I loved that. I said, you know what, that makes sense. But let's take the pressure of ourselves because no one cares. The tester said they don't care. The business don't care what we get after two weeks. They just care. What do we get at the end of the month for our monthly release? But we're still working in sprints because it helps us manage our workload and see how, many, how much work is going through the food chain, so to speak. But if there's a place where iterations don't work, I, this is my personal experience and I'm sure there's different methods. It might be a different methodology, it might be going back to waterfall, but Kanban's a brilliant one. It's simple to implement, very easy to use. It's just, you know, we have three developers, me, Zishan, I'm just looking, Mohammed Ikram. Ikram. Akram, is it Akram or Ikram? Mohammed Ikram. Imagine we're the three developers and we just pick up a card, the Scrum Master would just say, how long will it take you to do that card? Mohammed would say five days. I'll say six days. Zishan will say 10 days. Okay, let's track progress every day. Let's still have our stand-ups. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, good. And when it's finished, the business aren't waiting for you after every two weeks. You're telling them, well, when they, this is what you'll get in a few days' time. Forget these two-week sprint dates. We're not giving you something. Uh, look into that if you guys haven't. Look into Kanban. It's a very good tool. And we use that in Scrum. So remember, the Scrum Guide does not tell you how to work, how to take your work in sprints. It doesn't give you anything. It just tells you break it in sprints. Kanban is where you take work and put it on the board. So it says sprint backlog, in progress, testing, review, complete. That's all Kanban. Nothing to do with Scrum. I hope that was helpful. I'll get, at least give you a few um, insights. Yeah, that's fine, uh, uh, Imran. But I was asking for, is there any key parameter through which you can like uh, highlight segment like you should not use a giant like in term of the project duration is, is, is very less. If you have a very short budget, if you have a X number of team members, I mean, I mean this kind of parameter that you have in your mind that everybody can. I think the question. So yeah, I think the question you are asking is, is there any project where we shouldn't use Agile, right? Yeah. I'm going to be biased and say there's always a flavor because Kanban, I'm sure there is, for example. Um, like Kanban is a good option, but I'm just I'm asking about the specific, about the Agile, where shall not we use Agile, Scott? But is there any key parameter? Like, if there's a, okay. In, in the software industry, I can't see where you can't use it. But in non-software industry, like an infrastructure project where you're moving terabytes of data, let's say you're moving terabytes of data. Yeah, that's what it is. Why would you use it? Why not go to Waterfall or a different model? You don't have okay, to what? use it. Okay. Can we use Agile Scrum for, uh, for support and maintenance? Many teams do that. Many teams do, but they use they don't use Scrum. They use Kanban. They do, for support main, They don't use Scrum. They use. And you you said that man, uh, we we can use I man Agile Scrum for for soft, 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 software project. If I got some of the project which is only I got a maintenance contract from, from one of the, my client, so I should not use uh, Agile Scrum for that, right? I'm not saying that because obviously without looking at the. Um, in and outs. What I'm saying is, so let me give you an example at Vodafone. When I was there, we had DevOps team, okay? So the DevOps team, they don't need to work in sprints. So they were working in Kanban. They were working with the Scrum teams and saying, you tell us your priority, uh, sorry, your work for Chris. We'll prioritize it in our backlog. But they, they couldn't work in sprints because they didn't know themselves. They had too many dependencies to be able to work in a sprint. So they went with a simple, Let's put the card on the board, move in support, uh, especially with errors, errors that we get. So when you get errors from prod, we just put that on a uh, Kanban board and say, whoever's next available, pick that one up. You d but there are instances where you don't even need to use Agile. You can easily say, so I'm just probably 
going a bit off course here, but let me just give an example. If um, you're building a, uh, let's say a railway, the network rail, they use prints too, projects in a controlled environment, waterfall. They don't use Agile because sprints to them means absolutely nothing. They need good documentation up front. They need to know how the process is done. And if it's a small budget pro project or pro, then you can always come up during flavor of how best should we proceed. Don't try to, you know, don't try to fit a uh, square in a round circle because it won't work. All right. Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, I would like have a very Yes, but Junish, uh, I would like to add to this question. Yeah, I am also working in a maintenance mode. So I have uh, done a POC on Kanban. I would like to add for regular maintenance issues coming in from client, you can use Kanban. But for the same project, if you get like two, three months on that thing, so you can introduce a scrum method for that thing as well. So it will be mixed of two. All right, all right. I have it is. Anjum, what, Anjum, what I would say to you is don't um, be afraid to try and experiment. Don't be afraid to see what other flavors are out there that you can possibly try. And probably ask yourself the question, if this yeah, is my how would I want it? So I mean, sometimes the project is very small. Maybe one team member is handling the whole project. And if we have a full stack developer, do you think we still need to be used as agile scrum for a single team member? Uh, depends. Again, what when you say agile scrum, uh, believe it or not, I've got one team. I've got three teams at the moment. In one of my teams, there's only one developer, and we're doing scrum. Do you know why we're doing scrum? Because I still want. I know over a period of time that team's going to grow maybe two, three months down the line. But what I want him to do is get familiar with how Scrum works, how sprints work, and let him know that there will still be a demo at the end. So today he actually had to go to a different site to do a demo for his proof of concept. The guide, the Scrum guide says minimum three people, right? Maximum nine people, and that's very true. But this is why it comes to your imagination to say, why am I doing a sprint? Because if you you can do Kanban or you can do anything you like, but quantify it to yourself. So if you say to me, well, Imran, you've only got one developer. Why are you doing it? I'm doing it because I know over a period of time the team will grow and I'm doing it to make sure that developer understands we're still working. We still are setting you many goals. What are you going to do after two weeks? What is your objective for the next two weeks? Okay. With maintenance, I understand it might not be the same that can you, can you possibly predict actually how much you will do within two weeks. Um, but it might be a time to... Uh, yes, you know, Imran, sometimes excess of everything is bad. Like when overuse is, 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 is itself is a problem. So I mean, this is what I ask, I mean, this is all my question. Where, what is the best practice to you? I mean, why not, I mean, where we should not use Agile? So we can use for the training purpose, but that one thing, but what, what really Agile says, that I really wanted to know. Agile has a massive flavor. Do you know how many? I only know Lean, XP, uh, Kanban, Scrum, uh, and there's one other. I, it's got about 20 flavors. If you look at Agile, it says it's got flavor. There's disciplined Agile delivery, DAD, which is a one fit all solution, apparently, that, that it will help your project. Maybe that's something you need to look at disciplined Agile delivery, DAD, and see. One well, agile is a massive umbrella. Scrum's the most popular, but there's so many out there flavors of it that most of us haven't even experienced. I was at IBM; they had a flavor of agile. I forgot what it's. Rock, rational unified process. I had never even used it, and I was at IBM. And when people tell me about that flavor, I said, "I don't know what it is. I know it's an agile flavor, but I didn't use it." And so that's what I'm trying to say, that sometimes we have to think outside the box. I hear what you're saying. If Scrum is not the answer, or you feel not comfortable with it, not comfortable with another flavor, look, there's many other things out there that we've not even explored. 
we've not even looked at yet. Maybe that's the solution for us. Okay, great. I think just conscious of the time, so we can take like a couple of more questions before we can wrap up. So any further questions? Okay, hi Imran, this is Mumtaz Hassan here. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for such a wonderful presentation. Thank uh, you. It was quite helpful for us. So I have a question here. If we are following Kanban, if uh, it also contains some ceremonies like uh, scrum or we just have to move the items from one swim lane to another and at the end of some uh, Let's say we have two week sprint. So at the end of the sprint we have to tell it to the client that this has been done Is that your little child calling you with us? Uh, sorry, you have to say it again yeah. I said, was that your child calling you? It sounded like a little girl's calling you. Yeah, actually, he is playing in the background, so you might have heard his voice. Yeah. <laughs> it's half past ten in Pakistan. Are you guys, do your children not go to sleep at this time? Well, it's a mixed culture. Some people sleep <laughs> quite early here, and some used to stay. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so... I'm more than happy, I've got a slide that I'm more than happy to share with you guys on Kanban. It's about six pages per PowerPoint slide that I can get to see Sean's share with you. But very quickly to answer your question, Kanban doesn't have any ceremonies the way Scrum does. Kanban is about continuous flow, continuous flow. But, and this is what I do with my team, I still have a daily stand-up and I still have a retrospective, I still have a demo. I don't have sprint planning, I don't need pre... Um, we, I do work with a product owner because imagine the Kanban board, it's got four columns um, and it's got, let me just, uh, yeah, it's got four columns. I was going to do a slide here if I can. Let's see if I can get this slide in. It's, uh, uh, Imran, what about, um, we can schedule a separate session on Kanban, maybe in the future. I think there is interest on that. And we can park this question for now, and then when we go into this, we can we can deep dive. Okay, it. okay. Just give me one minute, please. Yeah, okay. uh, I've got I need to answer the question, but that's a good one. I'm more than happy to do that. I'm more than happy to do that. Okay, so imagine. Sure. I just want to because now I've drawn the table. Imagine this is um, backlog in progress. Um, something like this, right? Something very simple done. So that's your Kanban board, but you still need to work with the product owner because there, what you can't see is the main backlog. This is just the stories that are ready to be picked up. They're ready to be picked up. And you don't need any planning for that unless they have any questions. But then you need to go here and say, well, we've got backlog of 50 items. I need to work with the product owner in the background and still have those sessions. You have less sessions and you don't need sprint planning. The reason why I have a demo is because I still want the business to see, but they're not, they're ad hoc. What I mean by that, they're not every two weeks. They're when I feel we're ready, when I feel we've got enough in there to do a demo. So there might be one four weeks, once every six weeks. Um, the daily stand up, because I still want to know. They still need to know that we still need to report on progress. You need to decide what works for me as a scrum master and say, Actually, I still want the daily stand up. No, I don't want it. And why don't I want it? But that's a very important meeting. It's only 15 minutes. But that's a good one, Sishan. I don't mind doing a kind of presentation. Yeah, sure, no worries. So, any further question, guys? My, hmm. my closest. Uh, no question, but. Okay. No question, but I just want to confirm that uh, Rishan, can you help getting the health check request, uh, health check form that Imran was asking and the website link for game exercises? Yes, yes, Imran definitely. I will, I will share uh, as soon as I receive these things, I will share with the, with okay. the, with the group. Zishan, can we stay okay, in touch? Sure. Uh, if we stay in touch tomorrow, I'll send you everything you need. Yes, sure. No worries. Guys, um, one thing that I just want to make sure if I haven't done it is that there's no right way of doing things in the Agile world and you're going to be learning. It's empirical. That if you read the guide, it says it's empirical. Based on previous experience, we now know what to do. 
don't be afraid to experiment and don't please don't take this guideline this framework and try to say i must make this work no if there's something that doesn't work so with in our workshop we agreed retros don't work i dropped it well, what's the point of doing a meeting that the team aren't happy with? And they're not happy because there's a bigger problem. Let's go and fix a bigger problem. Then let's start having retros. I dropped it. And that's what I'm trying to encourage you to do. Be, feel free to change what the book suits your culture, what suits your organisation. That's why I like Jim's question. Maybe Scrum doesn't work for me. Is there anything else that would work for me? When will Agile not work? You need to think for yourselves. You've got the framework. Now you need to decide how best to make this work for you. And that takes time. Don't think you need to come up with a solution overnight. I must make it work tomorrow when I go to work. Either way, I don't think no one's going to, you know, be upset with you. You're, you're, it's an ongoing learning process. I learned over years. Where I am today, I did not learn in one year. When I look now, what I used to do, <laughs> once upon a time, I think, oh my God, was that that? Because you, you're not experienced enough. You know, like most things in life, it comes with experience. Once you start having experience, you'll feel more comfortable. You'll say, right. And that's what's important to review how you used to do things six months ago. How am I doing things differently now? Feel comfortable. If you, so what? And they're the best teams because in life, when you make mistakes, it's how you learn, how you respond that shapes you up for what you're going to be. That's my belief anyway. It was a pleasure to work with yourselves. I really do hope I get another opportunity to work with yourselves because it means a lot to me that passing on the knowledge to people in Pakistan. So hopefully you can build up Hajjan in Pakistan and I want to see more Scrum Masters in the UK. I have a from India in the UK and I, I, well, sometimes when I speak to them, I say it'd be nice to see people from Pakistan in the UK as well, working in this industry and passing knowledge on so we can make Pakistan a better place. That's my aim. That's what I'm in it for, to hopefully make Agile and make anything little bit I could to make Pakistan more better. That's my aim, inshallah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Imran. That's a very thoughtful message. And thank you for your time, taking your time and giving this lecture to all of us. And no inshallah, we'll get in touch. So thank you on behalf of Passe team. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for joining this session. So the recording will be made available in a couple of days on the YouTube channel if anyone has missed. And we can share with the meetup group and also the resources will be shared. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, I one mess. Thank you very much. <laughs> there was one message saying I don't want to leave. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to leave. <laughs> oh, I didn't read the messages. I'll just see them now. Yeah, they're from oh. chat messages. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Gulzaman. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. 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 Bye.